Good day, folks. Mark here again, new field doorsman. Um, if you watched the previous video that I uploaded there yesterday, I talked about how I had some uh, a few items coming from Canadian Outdoor Equipment, and it was supposed to be here, and I was gonna, like roughly coming like Thursday or Friday, and I'd do an unboxing video when I got it. Well, I got I got up this morning, and I got the parcel. So, woohoo! Um. I haven't opened it, well, I got it open, but I haven't been look. I haven't looked inside of it yet, so I don't even know if everything's there. God willing, I hope it all is, because I don't have to want to deal with all that, if it's not. But I figure I'd take you along for the ride and just show you some of the stuff that I got coming there. So, let's have us a guy. I tell you, they packs are pretty tight, because I got something bigger ordered in. It's like everything's packed in this little box. Just, uh receipt and stuff here well oh, let's take out the big daddy the big daddy first i suppose i'm gonna be a little bit out of focus here with the camera for a moment Ooh -hoo -hoo. it's my now jeans seamless stainless steel water bottle i've been wanting this thing now for a couple years and when i had you know when i had the money to do it i never Pulled the trigger on ordering it, and then the prices have been kept going up and up and up. So I said, you know what, the hell with it. We're just going to go ahead and order the damn thing. So, it's the Nalgene Stainless Steel. Water bottle, which is nice. And I like the retention strap onto it, too, for the lid, because it's just cordage. But it's not like, it's just got this little plastic piece so I can loosen it and just take it off for when I want to put it on the fire and then slide it back on after I'm done. So that's nice. You know, all nice in there, not a seam, so it should go good on the fire. I don't have to worry about the thing coming apart anytime soon. So that's that one. That's nice. Fire starter. More fire starter. <laughs> Bubble wrap. <laughs> How many of us played with that when we were kids? And still do as adults today. The next thing I got here is just a little chair cloth in. And boy, geez, little is right. That is small. Um, and just instructions on how to make chair cloth. But uh, I already know how to make that. And But it's a nice little kit to add to me pack. I mean, I usually use an Altoids tin, but it's a nice little tin. If I don't want to use it for chair cloth, and you know, I always use it for something else, I suppose. You know, throw in a little, keep using the Altoids tin for chair cloth tin and use this for a spice tin or something. Who knows? Yeah, there's always a million uses for a tin. Next, we got fire starting kit. This is the Voyager tin. And we got a little fire starter kit in here. Oop, hold on, boys. Bear with me for a second. Oop, sorry about it. Drop camera. Hold on there now, boys. Just gotta lay you down for a second. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. I guess this is why a lot of guys when they're doing unboxing videos will have everything all geared up, ready to go, so they can just take it out and show you. Well, like I said yesterday, well, like I said, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know I'm a very, fairly new novice at a lot of, still a novice at a lot of this, but yeah, it's nice look at that, a Voyager Trapper 10, all brass, great, nice looking, shiny, I'm sophisticated now. <laughs> I got something shiny for me, kit. Let's get this thing open here. Again, bear with me. Like I say, shooting this all on a cell phone, so you just have to bear with me. Holy crap, that tin, boys. That tin is like sealed. Oh, there we go. Oop. 
so this is like the inside the kit there we got some shoot twine there and we got uh, the fire steel and a piece of flint and a bunch of chair cloth and nice big hunk of flint there some pieces of jute twine and we got a big bag of chair cloth so that's pretty cool and we got this the fire striker flint striker it's pretty cool you know you know like that what you like I was looking at the other ones, like the two finger and three finger ones, like the typical like C shaped that a lot of us are used to seeing. But the comments I was reading, the even the three finger one was a bit small for someone with large hands, and also you could only get that one just as the fire kit itself. You didn't get the Voyager tin as well, and I wanted the Voyager tin too. Just because I'm a little bit, like I say, I'm a little bit old school. I've always, I've always had a fascination with like the Voyagers and the old fur trapping days and stuff like that. You know, like like a lot of us outdoorsmen. You know, I think we all kind of fantasize a little bit about being able to go back to them days, or you know, we kind of romanticize it. Oh, it'd be nice to just go out and you know live out the cabin in the woods and run a trap line and. You know, trap and skin, you know, trap and trade furs and just spend your days and paddling around canoe and stuff like this. I mean, a lot of us don't realize. I mean, there's some guys that are running trap lines now in modern times and know how much effort went into, know how much effort goes into it and what it must have been like even harder back in them days, dodging Indian, you know, dodging. If you were a white person, you were probably freaking fearing for you, you know, you were probably trying to stay away from the native tribes that weren't so hot, that weren't so friendly towards you and stuff like this. Um, now, for me, I don't know how that would have fared out because part of my ancestry is European and part of my ancestry is native. So, <laughs> if I could go back in time, I think I'd be in a conundrum. But, you know, this is just a little nice piece of kit, you know. Be bit of fun to practice with and just... Because I have made my own, actually, their uh, fire strike, flint striker. Um just out of an old file I had that I wore out sharpening axes and I snapped it you know I just snapped it and ground it down on the grinder and it worked for and it worked not too too bad I mean I got a few fires going with it but um I tried to change the, t the temper on the uh striker one day and I kind of think I kind of killed cooked the steel or killed it you know just it wouldn't take us it wouldn't give a spark to anything so I said, I'll get a one that's actually been forged to do that, you know. And, I mean, I live here in Newfoundland. I don't know if we have any flint. I'm not a big, I'm not that big on geology. But it's nice, you know, I got that now. I can take it to the beach with me and just pick up some different rocks. I know quartz work well, and we have a lot of quartz here in Newfoundland for giving sparks. So, if nothing else, I mean, I can, once the flint's gone, I can collect some, like, you know, I got some quartz downstairs and packed away that I could use so I can save my flint for, you know, when I want to get, when I don't want to practice, I actually want to get a fire going. But yeah, it's a nice little compact tin. It, uh, <laughs> like everything now, it looks bigger online when you're ordering it than what it actually is, but still, it's pretty cool. And the last piece I have here is just a leather sheath from TBS Outdoors. This is your standard sheath. I got that ordered because I wanted that for my uh, Buck Selkirk because the sheath on that broke on me there back there this summer. Or just, well, just before the summer, actually. The, uh, well, actually, I'll show you what happened. Anybody who owns a Buck Selkirk, this is what can happen. The belt loop cracked on me. And yes, I know, some people are being like, well, you know, a buck has a lifetime warranty, and yes, I know that, but in reality, this is just a cheap plastic sheath. A lot of people have said it in a, in a lot of reviews on the Buck Selkirk. Like I said, the knife was great, but the friggin' sheath was junk. 
right and this proves that I mean all I did and I mean yes this wasn't and I, this didn't happen from like me falling down the side of a slipping down the side of a cliff or you know jumping out of a tree or anything crazy like that you know how this happened I was getting into my car this hooked the seat belt loop and snapped that's all it was was a little bit of pressure from this hook in the seat belt buckle and snapped it clean like that and I, I tried to fix it with a bit of gorilla tape just to use it but that didn't help none at all I mean it just sat too high on my belt on my belt and it just was no good so yeah so if you're buying a buck if you're looking at the buck Selkirk and thinking about getting them they are a nice little knife but I had this mounted like in a scout mount in a cross draw mount and, and it, it just like I said it hooked the seat belt and that's what busted it so you might want to if you're going to buy one you may just want to carry it vertically on your belt or you might just want to upgrade your sheath completely right and I mean if you do leather work make your own leather sheath for it or if you got buddies you know that do leather work or kydex or whatever get them to make you a good sheath for it because the sheaths that come with it just are garbage but the knife itself is pretty nice I gotta say so we're going to uh, take the sheath out now we're gonna just cut it open Bear with me again, there, folks. Oops. Camera slipped. Bear it away, don't slice me finger open. And I mean, if anybody's wondering, this sheath is only like 38 bucks, I believe, so it's not too bad of a deal. And it will fit a more companion with like more garbage and stuff like that as well, which is nice. Like, I mean, I could have, the thing I like about this, like I said, it was only 37 bucks. I mean, I could have gone custom from some different makers. I mean, there's a couple people I follow on Instagram. There's a guy I follow on Instagram in Nova Scotia. He's doing a bit of work and stuff, but, you know, custom leather work's not cheap. And, I mean, you know, I'm not faulting anybody for what they charge or anything like that i'm not gonna get there and say they're charging way too much because they're not you know it takes a lot of from what i've seen it takes a lot of effort time and everything to make a good quality sheath and stuff so i mean i'm not gonna dispute that with somebody who's making one but some of his prices were higher than i wanted to pay just for a leather sheet just from a buck knife now yes if i if that was like a two three hundred dollar custom knife or something that i had and yeah i wouldn't mind paying the money for a high price sheath a high price leather sheath but just for the buck cell kirk that i got on sale this leather sheath will do perfect and if it doesn't fit i'll use my mora <laughs> into it but it should fit i might just have to uh looks like i may just have to do a little bit of wet forming from what uh, some people are after saying online because this thing this sheath is supposed to fit um more companions, more Garbergs, other more knives, and select varieties of heli knives. Basically, it'll fit anything up to four and a half inches. Um, so, that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. I'll probably shoot a video of the knife in the sheath once I get it all situated the way. I just wanted to do that quick video. Just show you, like I say, everything that I have here. There's all the stuff that I come. Like I say, so there's the, uh, oop, I'll turn the camera so you can see better. That's the uh, four items I had come there minus the knife. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Like I said, this is just a little video to show you some of the gear I had cut, done, come. Some of the gear I had ordered, sorry, and had delivered. Um, sorry about the song, sir. I uh, trying to think what to say here now. But yeah, anyway, that's the gear I had come. I just wanted to do that little unboxing video. I've never done one, so just a little video to do on my channel. New one to put up. And anyway, thanks for watching, and give a like and subscribe if you like the content. Thank you very much. Mark out.